Hey everybody, welcome back. It's a new day. We're going to do the rotational torque on this Dana 30. And that's controlled by these shims right here. So I have a starting pack of shims. I have my cup seated. And I have my setup bearing. You'll notice that bearing goes on and off easily. Um, the 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 bearing that's going to go in there is going to be uh, it's going to be a press fit on there. So while we're setting up rotational torque, uh, a setup bearing is I think it's essential. Uh, saves you from beating on the threads there and getting the pinion in and out because you're probably going to have to do this a couple, three, four, five times. Just you don't know. You know you got to. You got to start somewhere. We're starting with uh, 80 thousandths. I usually start at 80 thousandths. Uh, seems to be a lot of them work out at 80 thousandths. So we're going to put that in there, see where we're at, add or subtract shims till we get our correct rotational torque. Okay, that's our setup. Uh, no pinion seal. You don't want anything dragging on the yoke. We've got our shims in there, we've got the bearing. We're going to torque this nut down, and then we're going to get out the rotational torque wrench and see where we're at. Okay, guys, missed on the first attempt. I did not have enough rotational torque. Uh, you're looking with new bearings, you're looking for rotational torque on a Dana 30 between 12 and 15 inch pounds. I had four inch pounds on my first shot. Alright, I've got to take just a little bit out and we'll come back and check it one more time. Okay guys, this is my rotational torque wrench. Uh, this is um, I think it's an SK. This is an older SK. Uh, you can get these, you pick these up anywhere. And it's going to read in inch pounds. And you're just going to rotate it a few times. Right around 16. So I'm happy with that. It should spin freely by hand. There shouldn't be any dragging or anything. Uh, and that's how you're going to set it. Uh, sometimes it's going to take, it took me three times to get that. Uh, sometimes you're going to, you know, have to do it a bunch of times. Uh, play around with the shims. The nut I torqued down to 150. Uh, this isn't the nut I'm going to use. There's a lock nut that comes with it. I don't use the lock nut when I'm setting up. Um, but you want your new bearings to be a little bit tighter than, say, if you were setting this up and using your old bearings again. There'd be a lot less rotational torque. So, 12 to 15, and th that'll be fine. Um, so, we're going to leave that like that now. We're not going to put the, the regular bearing in or the seal or do anything like that. We're going to go after the uh, carrier next. Start setting up the carrier and um, see if we can get our backlash dialed in and, uh, and give a tooth pattern and see where we're at. But uh, rotational torque is set. And like I say, that'll feel super smooth. It won't be notchy or anything. So you'll get to feel, after you do a bunch, you'll get to feel how what they should feel like. But take your time and get this set up. It's critical so you don't smoke your bearings out of there if they're too tight or have pinion slop if it's too loose. Um, take your time, get the rotational torque just right. Okay, guys, there's our carrier. Setup bearings are on it. Starting to play around with shims. You're going to get new bolts with your uh, ring and pinion. Red lock tight on all the bolts. And they usually give you lock tight, but, but I just use it out of container. I got um, 55 foot pounds right here. Uh, it's a 3 8 bolt. A lot of guys give me grief and say don't take it to. <coughs> to 55 you'll ruin the bolt it'll strip and they need to be 55 
don't don't listen to anybody it's a high quality grade 8 bolt serrated head on there Loctite 55 foot pounds uh, it's been like that since the beginning of, of time and and you're not going to damage the bolts make sure you have a good torque wrench it's calibrated 55 foot pounds and you'll be all set again here's where your shims go without a setup bearing you can cause yourself a lot of grief um, so now the couple bearings I had the couple of shims I have in here under the bearings right now uh, that <clears throat> that is set up now just so I have taken all the slop out of the carrier shucking back and forth in the carrier in in the case the carrier is uh, like a push fit in there and there's no slop side to side uh, that's where you start I, I put it in there like that just randomly throwing shims in my backlash is way out of whack so now I'm gonna start shimming either side I'll take shims out of this side if I want to tighten up the backlash or I'll take shims out of this side if I want to move it that way um, it, it's trial and error here you have gotta start with getting zero slop side to side and then start adjusting your shims now I was way out on the backlash so I'm gonna I'm gonna make a drastic couple drastic movements first and quick check the backlash see if I'm even close before I start dialing it in so I'll meet you back over at the case we'll put that in and see where we're at okay guys got it in the case I don't have any caps on it yet I'm just doing a preliminary check of the backlash I can feel that's close to where we want to be. I'm going to torque the caps down. We'll check that for sure. And then, um, like I say, this is this is a fit without a whole lot of preload on the bearings. And when you get that fit, you want to put your preload, you want to preload your bearings on this side. When that pinion is turning, it wants to always push the ring gear away. This is where you put your extra depending on how tight a fit you got um, I'll put an extra 5,000 in there and I'll preload the bearings and it'll be on that side I know this won't move won't change the backlash but you want to preload from this side because like I say the force is going to be this way it's going to be pushed to this side of the case but right now we're just shooting for backlash see if we got it correct I'll torque the caps down and we'll check it Okay, I'll try and hold a camera and show you guys the backlash we got. Kind of hard to do. I'm just freehanding the camera. Uh, we've got exactly seven thousandths backlash, and the spec for the Dana 30 is between six and ten thousandths. So I only have a four thousandths window there. Um, you know sheet of notebook paper uh, in thickness so you want to get that right and that is 100 percent controlled by where you place your carrier okay now a regular rule of thumb when you're doing this uh, if you're too big and you want to close it up or you're too small and you want to open it up a five thousandths shim change will get you three thousandths difference of backlash so you change it five you'll pick up or lose three thousandths so five will get you three every time it's pretty standard um, it, it, it works just about every time so if you if you start with twenty thousandths backlash you know every five is gonna get you three so just do your math figure out where you need to be now I'm real happy with this backlash I'm gonna give a quick tooth pattern check um, then I'm going to pull the carrier again. I'm going to load up one more small shim, probably either a five or a three and a half. I'm not sure. I'll feel how it comes out uh, on this side. And like I say, we're going to we're going to preload the bearings from this side. So uh, I'm going to give a tooth pattern first. Uh, there's no load on this, so it'll be fine. And then we'll take it out, reshim it, and put it in for good.
Okay guys, we're loaded up with uh, marking compound and I'm just going to rotate this. Again, it should be silky smooth. We'll go both ways so we can read the coast and the drive pattern. Come back this way now. Okay, gonna have to try and get the camera set up to show you. Oops. You want the tooth to be centered in the depth of the, the gear here. Um, and then, you know, forward or backward. That's gonna tell you if your pinion is set right or not. But, um,. Let me try and get the camera a little bit closer here and I'll show you, I could show you the actual tooth pattern and show you what's a good one and what's a bad one. Okay guys, there's a pretty good shot of the coast side of the gear. The coast side of your gear is, is the angled cut. Your, your drive is the straight, your coast is, is the angled side. Okay, what we're looking for is the tooth centered from this surface down into the bottom surface. And you can see the pattern we're getting right here. It's centered. We got a little bit of space there. We got a little bit of space there. And you can see it's consistent on all of the teeth. Okay, that's what we want. So coast came in perfect. Let me try and get the drive side. Okay, drive side is a little bit lower down the tooth, but again, it's centered in the tooth. This one, you see, it kind of extends up in here. Okay, right in that area. That's a good setup. You want it centered in here. Centered, drive, this side's the coast. If you're setting up used gears, you want to be real careful on the coast because when you when you got used gears, you let your foot off the gas. Sometimes they'll howl if you get them. If it has a pattern in it and you don't set it up exactly the same, they'll start howling on you. And you don't want that. So, uh, we're going to rotate this a couple more times, see how this stuff is, is hitting the teeth. And then we'll go, we'll take a look in the book and I'll show you the, the, the correct and incorrect patterns. Okay, guys, we're going to look at some patterns here. Um, first thing you need to do when, you do, when you're figuring out your, your, uh, your pattern is to know if your gear was face milled or face hobbed. Uh, the, the tooth will be tapered um, if it was face milled. If it was face hobbed like this one was, uh, everything will be even so different patterns and, and and that's just something you gotta you gotta figure out along the way you, you gotta know what your gears are but let's take a look at some acceptable patterns here and we'll see a consistency where it's centered in the tooth okay it can be in various places but you can see it's centered the black mark in here is centered okay and you're getting a nice pattern. If your pinion's too close, try and get you in there. If your pinion's too close, look what happens. It's way down the bottom. It's way down, you know, the same different places on the tooth. That's just the nature of, of ring and pinions, but it's way down, you know, in the root, and, and you don't want that. Now let's see what happens when the pinion's too far. I think you get the gist of what's happening here. You see how it's way up? No matter where it is, it's, it's not in the right place depth-wise. So, um, you get the feel of setting gears up after you do a bunch of them. Um, so, let's get back over here. We have our coast side 
is big and then our drive side is down towards um, the toe okay uh, so we're basically all these patterns here are acceptable okay because they're centered and you never know what you're going to get each set of gears is different but you want it centered in the depth of the uh, tooth so our drive side down here it's not a problem we got a very nice coast let's look at it one more time I get a lot of pictures of guys setting stuff up and they send me their their patterns and stuff and um, you know if you get a book or something that shows acceptable and not acceptable patterns will be easier for you so again hard to see from this angle but our tooth is centered and that's what we want you can even see on these teeth where the where the marking compound is just kinda getting wiped on there you can see it's in the center I'll try and get that in there See, it's centered in there and that's what you're after this will be a nice long lasting set of gears they'll be nice and quiet and we should have no trouble with them so take your time when you're doing an axle setup I mean an extra 10 minutes an extra hour an extra two hours it doesn't matter because we're talking about the life of your gears and you want to do this once and you don't want to have to do it again so um, anybody has any questions on setting them up just let me know uh, I tried to cover everything from all the past questions I've gotten I've tried to cover everything uh, that I think is necessary so we're gonna go in we're gonna put the real bearings on and uh, finish this uh, center chuck section up and then we'll get into the ball joints and axles and stuff like that but we'll try and get this centered up this center section finished up today Okay guys, we're getting things buttoned up. New bearing is in. Don't forget your oil slinger. And your seal. Then your yoke's gonna go on. And a new nut comes with it. A new lock nut, 150 foot pounds. And the ring and pinion will be all buttoned up. Okay guys, there's the ring and pinion fully set up. All the new bearings are in, pinion seals in, yoke is torqued down, and I've got a little bit of my differential lube in there. And I'm just letting it I'm gonna let it hang like this. And just checking out that pinion seal. I always like to test them by letting this sit overnight or a couple days. See if we get any drips out of there. That way I know it'll be good for a long time. And if it does leak, now's the time to go after it. But um, everything's set up real nice. If you guys are enjoying um, this Dana 30 step-by-step -step, uh, video series, uh, let me know. Uh, put a comment below if you'd like to see uh, the rest of it go together. Uh, adjusting the ball joints properly. Uh, doing the U-joints and the brakes uh, we're going to do um, 11 inch brakes well that's what was on here but um, not what was on the CJ5 but uh, we're going to do some 11 inch brakes and um, if you want to see any of that stuff just put a comment below let me know so as always thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one